Well, good to see you here. Thanks for making it a point to be a part of our Sunday morning service. Um, there's a lot of other things you could be doing, but you're here in church, and I think that's amazing. If you're watching with us online, I want to say thank you for tuning in wherever you are, for taking the time, whether you're on vacation, or maybe you're just at home feeling a little under the weather. We're glad that you're with us in church today and that we get to worship the Lord together. Well, this is our Kingdom Builder uh, Sunday. For the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about Kingdom Builders alongside our series, This Is Us, and just talking about who we are as a church. So when you walked in today, you should have got two of these cards. And I want, the first card is simply this, and we did this, we do this every year, and it's just a card for your faith promise. You don't have to put your name on it, you don't have to, this is between you and God, but it's perforated here, and let me tell you why. You can today take this um, over the next couple of weeks, and you can turn in later to write down uh, what you want to do in being a part of Kingdom Builders. And so you can write that down, you can drop that in the offering box, it just helps us paint a picture of what lies ahead, so what people want to uh, get involved in do. It's basically saying over the next 12 months, this is what I'm believing God to do. So it's that faith promise. And the second one is for you to keep. You can write that in there, what your faith promise is. Put that on your refrigerator. You can see uh, the outline or the picture of our building. Pray for our church and just pray for the a miracle to come from that. And then on this, you can see our legacy offering. You've got a couple of different ways to give, and so you can be a part of that uh, there. And uh, it's real easy, convenient to do that. And so we've been talking about um, giving and, and sowing into what we're doing. And, you know, a reminder today that this isn't, it's not my church. How many know it's our church? That's one of the things I love is when I talk to new people, and new people will come, and they'll always be my church, or your church, your church, your church, and I love when I hear the shift where they'll say, our church, our church. And so if you're visiting today, maybe you're new. Maybe you're just checking us out. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Don't feel any pressure to be a part of this Kingdom Builders offering. You can. You can give, but don't feel any pressure to do it. But I want to say this today, that if you are family, you say, this is my church. Arise is my church. Maybe this is your first Sunday here, like, this is my church. Okay, awesome. I want you to feel pressure to give. I want you to feel pressure. That's, that's, I, I, pray, I pray for the day that my kids feel pressure to clean up our house. Because they're family. There's not much pressure right now, right, Jaron? No, no pressure right now. No pressure. You walk by the dishes, no pressure. Um, yeah, what a lovely thing for, for when people realize, all right, we're family. This is my, this is my duty. This is my duty as a part of the family to get it done. And as you know, with our building, we've been in that process of building uh, for a long time, talking about it, believing for it. Our permit expired. They are right now getting our permit. It's actually going to be reissued, extended for six months. So we got this six months in this crunch time to get as much done as we can, and then they'll reevaluate it, and we're just praying over these next six months. And so our giving today uh, in our Kingdom Builders offering, which goes to fund things above and beyond outside our church, we've, we fund things, Arise Cares, feeding those who are hungry, different missions projects. This year we sown in our Kingdom Builders. Um, and some of you may not realize it, you're just giving to Kingdom Builders, but we were able to give to a water project in the Philippines to help people get clean water, uh, other missions projects. Um, you know, even in our church, we support over 24, 25 different missionaries around the world that all comes through your giving. And Kingdom Builders is that above and beyond giving. Uh, on, on the outside, not just typical light bills and that kind of stuff, but really to our projects. And that building is one of our projects that we're doing, and it's huge. And so we're, we're nearing the end. And I want to just ask if you would pray and to simply get involved in it. Remember, God's not looking for equal amounts of money. It's equal amounts of sacrifice. And that's really what matters. The person who moved God, the only offering that you, you read that kind of like stopped heaven in its tracks was the widow who gave two mites. It wasn't the amount that she gave, it was the size of the sacrifice because she gave it all. And today I just would say, look, people say, what do I do? What do I give? I, it's really simple and this has been our strategy for the last couple of years. I just tell you, ask the Lord what he would have you to do and do it. That's it. Ask the Lord what he'd have you to do. Get that faith number put it out and so 
And it's something my wife and I, we're, we're, we've been doing it. And I, I didn't know we'd be in the position we are today where our faith is stretched more than ever. But I realized, no, we, we still need to do it. We need to, we need to lead the way. And, and that's what we're doing. And we're going to give. We're going to sow. We're going to believe. And there's other people in our church that are doing that. So on this Kingdom Builder Sunday, if you just ask God, what do you have you do if you're family here? And I just want to say thank you for helping us to build the next house. So we're in our series called, uh, not the next house, the first house. All right. Uh, <laughs> we're renting this house. So we're, we're, we're going to get our own house. Um, and I'll throw in one more thing in. I'm, I'm convinced with everything in me that the devil and the kingdom of hell does not want us to finish that church. Doesn't want us to finish that church. We are taking back land. We are redeeming that property in the middle of Hilo. We're going to build that lighthouse of hope. And the devil's not happy about it. And that's why there's been challenges. But we're not going to give up. The games are won in the fourth quarter, and, and we're, we're pressing through. So in our church, uh, we've been talking in this series, This Is Us, and talking about if, if someone were to ever come to you and say, what is Arise Church all about, that you would be able to answer with this. And Christopher just said it today, that we are, uh, we're, this is what we're about, uh, uh, biblical truth, authentic relationships, and serving others. It's what we're about. And so we talked about the first two over the last two weeks. And today I want to talk to you about serving others, serving others. Uh, I, brought, um, I brought a guitar that I have uh, to church this morning. And this was a guitar. If you don't know, I started playing the guitar. I was in the fourth grade. I learned how to play the ukulele in fourth grade. I loved it. And we had a guitar at home. It was a nylon string guitar, and it was just kind of sat in the corner. It was my dad's guitar. And I realized when I was in the library, and I thought, I'm going to learn. I want to learn how to play the guitar. And so I, you know, we didn't have YouTube back then, obviously. So you had to rent, borrow a book. Some of you may, old timers might remember that. You borrowed books. And I still remember it was a book. It was yellow, and it was creatively titled How to Play the Guitar. And so I, I got that book and I went home and I, be, I, I got my dad's guitar and I looked at the book and I just learned, I began to learn chords. And I still remember the first song I learned to play on the guitar was Country Roads. Take me home to the place I belong. You know which one, right? It's the first song I learned how to play. So my dad's at work. I learned how to play the song. Like I just learn it. That, that day, my dad comes home from work, and he's just blown away, because it's like in the morning, I could play zero guitar. He came home, I was singing Country Roads, and so he, he was blown away, and so I've always loved the guitar from a young age, and I played in church, and I, I've done all of these things, and back in 2020, I, I'd actually asked my wife, because I had another one of, of these guitars, but I had asked my wife that I, I'd wanted to get like this, this kind of guitar, so I don't... 95% of you could care less about this right now, but I'm up here, so bear with me. And so I, I wanted this. And, and guys, you would know, right? Have you ever given your wife the thing, if I get this one, I'll never want another one again? <laughs> this, is, this will be the one to end, right? We, we say that, and we're usually lying. But actually, this is the truth. I, I don't want another one. This was the one I wanted. I always wanted a guitar. This one is... in. Uh, Rosewood, so it's rosewood in the back, a smaller body, but it still gives you the base. Again, you don't care, bear with me. Uh, this spruce, it's a special spruce. I won't get into that, but this top is amazing. You can see the binding here. It's all coal wood that goes around. And the reason is the gentleman who made this guitar, uh, James, he actually lived in Kona for years and years. He had his factory there by Costco. They relocated, I think, around 2019 to California. But he still does these things so with koa, and so he got the koa detail. My first one that I had gotten from him uh, was just plain. And what I always wanted, because his guitars, he's a born-again Christian. And part of his logo is you can see these doves that represent the Holy Spirit. And that's, that's what I really wanted was the doves. So I was able to get the doves. You can see the dove wings up here by his logo. And, and so I was able to purchase this. I, I just thought it was amazing. It was beautiful. I'm so happy about it. I guard it with my life. Like, I don't even want my kids to touch it. And uh, I, I, I love this guitar. And so, you know, we got it. And it was, was good. 2020. In 2020, I got it. And then the pandemic happened and all that stuff. But I, I, I always look at the guitar and I think about that. But 
I, I look at it, and I just think, man, how, how beautiful, at least to me, since I'm a guitar player, how beautiful it is. But could you imagine if all I did with this guitar was leave it in my bedroom on a stand and, and look at it every day? Wow, look at that guitar. Look at that guitar. Don't touch the guitar. Look at the guitar. Look at the guitar. And if I never played the guitar... I think it almost would be insulting to the person who built the guitar, right? Because James Goodall didn't embark on a guitar career to create pieces to sit in a museum. He created instruments that actually would be played and actually played for worship. I mean, that's his heart. He loves the Lord with all his heart. And, and so the guitar to be played. So what a waste and what a shame it would be to have a guitar that just sat every day that was never used. See, in order for this right here to reach its full potential, what does it need to be? It needs to be played. All right, at least four of you are keeping up with me on where I'm going with this. It needs to be played. See, if we're, all we're doing is looking at it, it, it missed it because what, where the full potential, what's, what, what really makes this special is not the fact that it looks good. Okay, that's not it. What, what, what makes it awesome is this, is that you can, you can play it, right? Because when you begin to play it, now you're beginning to hear the full potential of this instrument. The goal wasn't to just have something that had koa on the binding or, or this or that or, or, you know, whatever. It was to create something that actually sounded good. Because when you begin to play it, it unleashes. It's, it's, it's what it was created to do. These strings to vibrate and to resonate and to hold it there. I, I just love, I love the feel of the acoustic guitar. And as you begin to hear it, and bear with me, I'm old school. It's an old song, but we fall down, we lay our crowns. At the feet of Jesus, the greatness of His mercy and love. At the feet of Jesus, we cry, holy, 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 we cry. That's what the guitar was created to do. And, and do you notice what happened as, as I began to do what it was created to do? Is it, it actually unified people? It unified, if you knew the song, you began to sing and, and you began to worship and you began to engage. It happened with this instrument right here. And when you look at this instrument, you realize that it is something that it's man-made and yet it's beautiful. Man-made, but it's beautiful. Romans 6.13 tells us, do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. We, humor me for a second. We just hug yourself. Hug yourself. Everybody hug yourself. Hug yourself. Everybody hug yourself. Come on. Love yourself. As you hug yourself, I want you to realize right now you are squeezing an instrument that God made. It's an instrument that God made. This, this isn't man-made. It's God-made. God created you. So three things I want to share with you this morning. Number one is this. We were designed by God. Ephesians says that we are his masterpiece. Think about all the great things in the world, art and all those amazing things. 
You know, the, the Bible doesn't say that the Mona Lisa was God's masterpiece. It doesn't say that, that the Colosseum in Rome, as amazing as that thing is, is God's masterpiece. It doesn't say that the Grand Canyon or Mauna Kea was God's masterpiece. He says, you were his masterpiece. And I think there's nothing more that the devil would love to do than to get you to believe that you're not worth anything. To convince you today that you're worthless and there's not much hope in your life. I'm here to tell you, friends, he designed you. You are his masterpiece. He's created you today with purpose. We are instruments that God made. Instruments for righteousness. And you know the best song that we can play with our life is when we do what is right for the glory of God. See, we're talking about serving others. Serving others happen when we serve others. And different instruments make different sounds. I was thinking that, you know, I would probably get pretty bored, as much as I love the guitar, if I went to a performance that was 50 guitars playing the same thing. Ten songs by 50 guitars doing the same thing. You know, after a while, it'll just get a little monotonous. It all sounds the same. But I get a little bored of it after a while. You know, what's beautiful is if you've ever gone to a symphony. Ever been to a symphony? You have all these different instruments. They look different. They sound different. In fact, some of them, even by themselves, are not the most pleasant instruments to listen to. But you know, when you mix them together, when you put them with other instruments, you begin to hear a sound that's actually quite pleasing and it can be refreshing and relaxing. You know, Romans 12, 6 says, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it's giving, give generously. If God's given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. It's a beautiful list of gifts that's shared with us right there. Some areas that God has gifted people in. And that's my second point this morning is this. We were gifted by God. We're gifted by God. You know, every instrument has a unique and different sound. And you and I, as instruments created by the master creator, you and I have different and unique talents. What you can do, you can do something great that I can't do. And just because I can't do it doesn't mean it's important or that you can, that it's more important. Everything that everyone can do can make a difference. I love what I heard a pastor say once that they believe or he believes that God has made everyone a 10 in some area. In some area of your life, you're a 10. He's made you with a gift. And you know, in the book of Romans, that gift, the grace, God in his grace, that word is charis or pronounced charis. And a charis is that grace. It means grace. God has given us, you could call a grace gift. A grace gift. What is a grace gift? It's a gift that has nothing to do with you. It was God in his grace. From the moment you were conceived, God decided that he was going to give you that gift. A different gift than anyone else. And he's gifted you in that way. Peter goes on to mention in 1 Peter 4.10, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to what? Serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. 
then everything you do will bring, bring glory to God through Jesus Christ, all glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Why did God gift us today? It's not so that we can look good or be popular. He's gifted us to serve others. To serve others. That's what life is all about. Serving others. And that's why you have a unique ability. You have a unique talent. You have a unique gifting that the master creator has given you. And it is to serve others. Serving others. We have people that serve every weekend here in our church, and we're so grateful for them. Our worship team that was up here earlier, the tech team, our host, and the people greeting at the doors and, and doing things at times that you can't even see, setting up and breaking down and carrying tables and, and making coffee, and, and they're doing those. And it's wonderful that it happens here in church, but how many know that it's not only in church? The great thing is when we take it outside of the four walls. It starts in church for a lot of people, but we don't want to just be kind in church. I mean, we got to be kind outside of church. In fact, if you're going to be a part of a rise church, be kind. We got too many mean Christians in this world. Be a nice Christian. Can I get an amen on that? Be a nice Christian, especially if you're going to wear one of our rise church t-shirts, because if not, we'll take it back from you. No refunds. We'll take back the shirt, man. That's why we haven't done bumper stickers yet. I've seen how some of you drive. Yeah, you know. So we, we want to be kind and we want to serve outside of these walls. And that's really where that growth comes in our, in our life. But it's really having a heart to serve others. That's why Christmas, we're going to be out. There's a there's hundred other things you could probably be doing Christmas morning. Sleeping in, drinking some hot cocoa, opening some presents. I, I don't know what you could be doing. But there's going to be, you don't have, not everyone will be there, but there will be a group of people there. And, and we're going to be feeding people that are going through a hard time in life and just being a blessing on them. We can't, we can't do everything, but we can do something. And we just want to serve. And that's who we are as a church. And it takes me to the last thing, number three, is we're united by God. United. God unites us by purpose. You know, when I started playing this guitar... When I unlocked its full potential, because it's not just made to be looked at, but it's made to be played. And when I began to play that song, what had happened is for those of you that knew the words, we united in purpose. And even if you didn't know the words, you probably entered into really an attitude of worship. You see, when it unlocked its full potential, it began to do what it was created to do. And I think that when we begin to use our gifts and our abilities and what God has gifted us in, it begins to unite our church in purpose. But what happens is we oftentimes don't see the value in our own giftings. We look around and quite often think, I wish I was like somebody else. I wish I could do what they were doing. I, I wish I could sing like them. I wish I could do that. I wish my life was like, that's one of the downfalls of social media. You compare, I heard it put this way, we compare our behind the scenes with everyone else's highlights. People are crafting that image. You guys know what I'm talking about. You have your, you know, you look all good in your selfie, but that took 45 shots to get that one shot. <laughs> Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Right, we're going to see all of our you know, people Christmas pictures, and oh man, that family, why, why, why can't my family look like that? Trust me, probably like 30 seconds before that, they were screaming, I'm going to kick you if you don't leave your sister alone. You look at the camera and you smile. You cut it out. You tell, no, no, no. I was like, I wish I had that. <laughs> my family, look at my family. They're horrible. Oh, my gosh. And, and we, we want to be like somebody else. We want other people's gifts. We want other people's abilities and we don't see that God's created us with a specific purpose in mind. And maybe you grew, grew up and, you know, you might have seen me playing the guitar just now. And you're like, I always wanted to play the guitar. I wish I could play the guitar. Why can't I play the guitar? Or you used to land in on the keys or John on the drums or Tim on the guitar. I, I, I always wanted to play. And, and you wanted to play the guitar. But instead of the guitar, God made you a cowbell. 
right? Like, oh, I always want to play guitar, but I can only play cowbell. You're like, who wants a cowbell? This is all I could do. Why can't I do that? Why, why can't I do something else? But you know that God has gifted you specifically. And if God's made, given you the gift of the cowbell, then you play the cowbell to the glory of God. <laughs> Not on Sunday mornings, but at home. You can play that cowbell. <laughs> Tambourines and cowbells. You can do it at you know, worship time. Yeah. Because I, I was thinking about that. I'm convinced. We, we think, well, God just wants to get... No, no, no. Honestly, there's got to be times when God's like, I wake up in the morning and all I want is more cowbell. <laughs> some of the greatest songs. I'm not going to name them because you think I'm a sinner. But there's, there's some songs out there. Oh, you hear that cowbell? When they're going, when the band's going, you're like, that's awesome. That cowbell, come on, Saturday Night Live, Will Ferrell, was that not the, the, the best, the best skit ever, right? Oh, cowbell. And if we don't learn how to embrace who God has made us to be, we'll never unlock our full potential. Every gift has value. Every gift has potential. Every gift has a purpose. You look at the symphony, like in some songs in the symphony, the symbol guy waits all the way just for the very end for the whole song. That's, he just had one time. That was his moment. But that made the song everything. Watch the symphonies. I'm amazed at it. Even the triangle people. I always thought, how do you audition for triangle? <laughs> Ding. Uh, how about you? Ding. How about you? Ding. How, how do you choose? I don't know. But you ever hear those songs? Like, they're just going, and then you just hear that it gets quiet, and you hear that, ding. And you're like, that was nice. <laughs> wow. The triangle. Everything has its purpose. And God's created this incredible symphony that we call the church. And when everyone is doing their job in a band, in a symphony, the instruments aren't meant to compete against each other. They're meant to complement one another. And it's the same thing in church. If you're in church and you have an attitude of competition, oh, how come they get to do that? How come they didn't ask me? How do I get to do that? Oh, that's not fair. If that's your attitude today, you're never going to flourish in the house of the Lord. We're not here to compete. We're here to complement. We're here to cheer on. I, I, I want to see people do greater things than any of our leadership has ever done. I'm so glad, like, I used to be lead worship all the time. I love seeing the worship team, how, how they've risen up and, and they're getting involved and, and they're doing it and they're being a part of it. I don't look at that and sit there and say, oh, how come they didn't ask me to play today? Yeah. Well, I am playing next week. Anyways, but I don't sit there and think that, oh, wow, they're better than I am. Take them off next week. No, go, go, flourish. I'll cheer you on. God bless you. It's amazing. It's wonderful. Ephesians 6, 7 says, work with enthusiasm as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will reward each one of us for the good we do, whether we are slaves for free or free. Whatever we do, we do as unto the Lord doing is unto the Lord. So here's the question. Do you just want to be on display? Do you want to be on display or do you want to be used? You want to just be seen or do you want to be heard? Instruments, when you go to a concert, you don't go to see the guitar, you go to hear the guitar, right? You, go, you don't go to see the drums, you go to hear the drums. It's not about the singer. You want, you want to hear the singer. If they couldn't sing, you wouldn't care about them anyway. You want to hear, you want to, you want to hear what's happening. Are you serving the Lord to be seen? Or are you serving the Lord to fulfill what God created you to do, to step into your destiny? You know, in closing, I, my wife and I were at a service a couple of weeks ago, and we, we heard a pastor sharing, 
pastor is uh, probably the largest outreach ministry in the United States. His name is uh, Matthew Barnett, pastor of the Dream Center, and he was sharing about um, and in case you don't know about them, they, they bought a hospital about 20 years ago, I think like a 13, 14-story hospital, right around the Skid Row area in the slums of L.A. And, you know, you think of L.A., you think of Disneyland or all this Hollywood. No, I mean, they got some slums there. It's bad. And they bought this hospital for, for outreach and 13 floors. They have housing for prostitutes, um, drug addicts, homeless veterans, abused mothers, just all these things and just outreach and it's an incredible ministry. So he was sharing us his testimony how under one of the bridges nearby to where the dream, the, the dream center is, there was a man who had been living under the bridge for 13 years. 13 years he's been living under the bridge. And he said for those 13 years he would try to talk to this man. The guy never wanted to talk to him. They tried to give him stuff. He never wanted anything. He said he even went to him and he said, I'll give you $20 if you talk to me for 10 minutes. The guy's like, get away. I, I don't want your money. Leave me alone. So he, he just never could. He never could crack that nut. He tried. Um, long story short, they had a youth ministry coming in to serve from, I think it was Oklahoma. And there was this young girl, like 15 years old, who had heard the story about the guy under the bridge. And she told the pastor, I'm going to bring that guy in. And, and he, you know, he goes, he's thinking, all right, you know, little missy. But he also goes, I learned never to tell people they can't do anything because God will, you know. So he just, he just said, ah, very good, you know, go, go for it. She goes and basically grabs this guy's hand and drags him to the Dream Center. He asked her later, why'd you do that? He goes, well, my youth pastor said we need to compel people to come to Jesus. So that means physical force if necessary. That, that's what she said. So the guy came. He came. He started coming. He, he'd get food and he'd leave. They wouldn't go to church, wouldn't go to Bible studies. He'd just get food and leave. And it's just like a couple of years, and he would do this. And so Pastor Matthew was sharing that he, he was frustrated. He started getting frustrated about this guy because he's, he starts talking. You ever talk to God when you're mad? He's, so he goes, hey, I told you, it's not fair. It's not fair. He just comes and he grabs food. He doesn't stay for Bible study. He doesn't come to church. He doesn't do any of this stuff. He's just, come, he's just taking advantage of us. He's just walking all over us. And he said the Holy Spirit spoke to him at that instant and simply said, if you want to be the bridge of faith and hope to the world like you guys talk about, how's that going to happen without people walking all over you? And when he said that, I tell you, that hit me like a ton of bricks because there's been multiple times when I've thought, God, that just ain't fair. Why are they doing this? Why are they taking advantage? That's not fair. How are we going to be a bridge if we don't allow people to walk over us? Jesus said in Matthew 25, at the end when the nations are gathered, the shepherd will separate the sheep from the goats. In verse 34, the king is going to say to the sheep, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, you invited me into your home. I was naked, you gave me clothing. I was sick, you cared for me. I was in prison, you visited me. The righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty or give you something to drink or stranger, show you hospitality naked and give you clothes or see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. You know that everything we do and we serve, everything we do, we do it as unto the Lord. It's unto the Lord. So you might take advantage, feel advantage of for a moment, but we're not doing it unto them. We're doing it as unto the Lord. And what happens is when we do it unto the Lord, like we read earlier, God brings, there's going to be a blessing that's attached to that. You, 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 you can't disconnect. We don't do it to get blessed, but there's a blessing that comes when we're obedient. So this morning I, I pulled into church thinking of this message and I pulled in and I parked and I, I started thinking about what we tell the people that serve at Arise Church. We've told them this for a long time. 
we've always said, um, hey, we need you to park as far away as possible. Take the worst parking. And then I thought, but we also say, you're serving, so we need you to come early. Why do usually people go early anywhere? It's to get the best parking or the best seats, right? So we, we've told our serve team, we've said this, we need you to park far and sit close, because in most churches, people don't want the front row, right? It hurts my feelings, but that's okay. So we said, look, sit, sit close, park far. So we, we need you to wake up early today and get ready because you're going to serve. We need you to come early, but we need you to park up far away because there's going to be people that come to church that are sleeping in today because they're, they're not doing anything. They don't, they don't serve, so they're going to come later. So we want to save the best parking spots for them. So you're going to serve, park far away, be inconvenienced, Sit up close because some of those people, there's, you know, you, you know the people in the back. I'm just saying, um, you know, we want to save, we want to say because God's still working on them back there. And I'm just kidding. All right. If you're offended by that, don't be. All right. And then they, the people that serve, I'm thinking, I'm walking up thinking of this. And then we say, but, but yeah, and you're serving your family, so we need you to we need you to give, and we want you to tithe, and we want you to sow, and, and, and be a part of that, and, and worship, and be in the service, and oh, by the way, can you stay a little longer too, because you know everyone else is going to leave early, and we need you to help clean up. So do all of those things, and, and that would be great. Thank you so much. You know, it would be easy for people to think, that's not fair. <laughs> that's not fair. What about, I talked, Jerry and I talked about you today. I'm talking about you right now. He's our baby, Jaron, our baby. Jaron's always been, you know, tell Jaron to do something and he's always, what about them? <laughs> Just last night, Melody's sleeping. We're getting dinner ready. We're making gills as, I said, Jaron, come out here. He's playing games. And I said, Jaron, he was playing these games. I said, if you, don't, if you don't help us make dinner, you ain't eating. So he comes out, Melody's sleeping, and he sits down. So I'm taking it, I'm, I'm taking then that Melody's not eating dinner tonight. <laughs> like, Don't you worry about your sister. But it's easy to say, what about them? What about them? What about everyone else? And then we're doing kingdom builders, and we're asking people to give above and beyond their normal tithes and offerings. We're asking you to give. Why? So that we can... Cr- build this really nice church so that somebody who's never given a penny or served or done anything for us might come. We're asking you to sacrifice. Somebody might come and they can encounter God. That's not very fair. Do we want to be on display or do we want to be used? Do we want to play that song? Do we want to be unified in spirit and in heart? And I just realized for me, I, I'd rather be in that area where my faith is stretched and I'm having to believe and I'm having to sacrifice and I'm ready to sow to see maybe one life. I, I know more lives will be changed, but even just for that one life, it's worth it. It's worth it. So I want to close our time today. Let's have a heart that says, I want to serve others. And I, I look at this, our, our kingdom builders, this giving, it's about serving others. It may be in the form of finances, but it's to serve others because it's going to go to that project. And I have people tell me all the time, the church is not a building. I know it's people, but we meet in buildings. It's just our net. It's that building is going to be our net that we're going to catch people in. People are going to walk in. They're going to be loved on by you beautiful people as people are all the time. They're going to be impacted by the power of God, whether it's through my message or someone else's message. We we were gone for a month without the movies and we had people still coming to church. That's awesome. It's not about us. Lives are going to be impacted. You're going to be a part of that. It's part of serving others, and we just want that to be who we are.